So we've seen the zero forcing equalizer, and now we're going to look at our second example of a linear equalizer, and that is the minimum mean squared error equalizer, MMSE equalizer. So the zero forcing equalizer that forces the intersymbol interference to go to zero is not a good strategy when the noise is high. So we got a little intuition about this when we think about where the um, frequency response of the channel goes low, the inversion that the zero forcing uh, equalizer implants means that the noise is going to be enhanced. If there's not much noise, it's not a big deal. But if it is too noisy, this is just not a good uh, strategy. Uh, so what we need is something that actually takes into consideration what is happening after the equalizer. Not just what is happening to the ISI after the equalizer, but what's coming out of the entire output. And so the approach that we're going to discuss is minimizing the mean squared error. And this uh, error is minimized whether the error comes from noise or whether it comes from uh, intersymbol interference. And this is what we're going to be discussing today, the MMSE equalizer. So in terms of structure, it looks exactly the same as the zero forcing equalizer. The structure is the same. It's a, another version of a transversal filter, which we also call the tap delay line. Uh, there are uh, coefficients in the filter uh, that we will be seeking to find. And there's delays, and the number of delays, the number of taps is going to determine how effective uh, one MMSE equalizer is versus the other. Uh, the more taps, uh, the better performance, etc. But in any case, same structure, but of course different coefficients because we're going to be choosing these coefficients to optimize a different parameter. So at the entrance to the um, equalizer, this is the received signal, and it goes through this filter, and the output of this filter is uh, Z of T in this uh, set of equations. And what we're trying to do is have this output of the equalizer. What do we want it to be? Well, we want it to be our data. So if we did perfect equalization, what came out of this equalizer would be the data. But of course, there's some error involved, and that's what we're going to try to minimize with the MMSE equalizer. So here is the error criterion that we use with the MMSE. So you can see it's the output of the filter minus the data that was transmitted. So if it was perfect, this would be D, and the error would be zero. But it's not, because there's noise and there's residual distortion, and those two things will contribute to make it not be exactly equal to the data that we transmitted. So this is what we're trying to minimize. Now, the data has random, well, it has data, <laughs> which we can model as random data. And of course, the received signal, it has noise in it which is random. And so when we're talking about the mean squared error, this E represents the expectation operator on a random variable. So this is actually a random process, but we'll sample it and become a random variable. And we're trying to minimize the expected value of this um, uh, error criteria. So we're going to have a finite length filter and the filter here is 2n plus 1 taps in this example. And we're looking for uh, the coefficients, of course, in this filter. And remember, it's the y that has the noise present. Again, we'll just say that there's some spacing between the uh, taps in the equalizer. And in uh, most applications, this delta operator is just the simple interval. But of course, there are other options available to us also. So the idea of the MMSE is to take into account the presence of noise, which the zero forcing equalizer completely ignores. <laughs> it ignores the fact that noise is present, and it, and it simply assumes that the impairment is ISI only, and it works for that. But in this case, instead, we're looking for uh, the proximity, how close is the output of the filter to the ideal signal. Uh, of course, if we want to know how close it is to the true signal, well, we have to know what is the true signal? Ah, this is a lot more demanding than knowing the channel. We also have to know the data. The communication system is all about you know, sending data from A to B. If I already know what the data is, there's no point to send the data from A to B. It's already at B. So this is a little bit of a confusion. But of course, it's not like that. What we do is we use a training sequence. 
And we usually put this training sequence into some sort of frame. So they'll be a part of the data which is transmitted, which I'll, I'll call the header. And then there's the main body of the frame, which is the data. And what I do is, this is the data I want to communicate from point A to B. But in the header, I put in what I call a training sequence. And that is something that is known. It's known at the receiver. So for instance, if I have a Wi-Fi standard, 802.11, they will put into there what is the training sequence so that every time they implement a system, they will, uh, receiver will know what it is that's being transmitted. The transmitter will always transmit that training sequence. So it's possible to have some known data in order to estimate this uh, mean squared error. So if we have perfect knowledge of the channel, you know, we can uh, come up with uh, perhaps this expected value. Uh, but if we don't, and then we have to estimate it, we're going to have to know the data in order to do the estimation. So let's go back to this error criterion. And let's look at what it is that we're trying to um, minimize uh, from a probabilistic point of view. So one of the um, functions I'm going to define is the correlation function. And this is the correlation between the received signal and the data that was transmitted. And there's some lag tau that I introduce in between the received signal and the data transmitted. And this correlation function varies with this lag. And so, for instance, with tau equals zero, I take the received uh, signal and I completely correlate it with the data and I ask myself, how similar is this to what was transmitted, the true data that was transmitted? That will give me one number, this expected value. So this function, this correlation function, means as I d um, delay the received signal from the data that was actually transmitted, how correlated are they? If they get far enough apart, they could, should be completely uncorrelated. But this gives me the function uh, for this correlation. So if I were to make a um, digital version of this, a sampled version. This is a continuous for any tau, which it could be continuous. Now suppose I use tau, which are multiples of the um, delay that I am using inside of my uh, equalizer. So now here it is, 2 to the n plus 1 uh, taps, and I could make a uh, sampled version of this correlation function with 2 to the n plus 1 points. So this becomes a vector in my vector notation and it's an expected value for a particular lag. Now I can define the same operation, but now an autocorrelation. So I look at how correlated the received signal is with itself, and I make that a function of tau. But again, I want to relate this to what I'm seeing inside of my equalizer. So I'm going to do a sampling, and I'm going to be sampling at the same rate as my equalizer is running at. So I'm looking at intervals of tau again. And uh, because my signal, my equalizer is 2n plus 1, I'm going to have uh, a 2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1 uh, matrix. And just by uh, the definition of uh, this constructed uh, version of the autocorrelation matrix, it's got this uh, toplet structure that we saw earlier, even with the zero forcing. So by the definition of what the autocorrelation function is and by the sampled version of the autocorrelation, the continuous time co uh, correlation function, I come up with this uh, matrix, the autocorrelation matrix, which is toplets. Now, if I want to look at the relationship between the input and the output I could uh, of the, the filter that I'm trying to find, I could base it on the uh, coefficients. And if I, again, this is the same vector of coefficients that I defined earlier for the zero forcing, but now it's for the MMSE. And I want to uh, establish this relationship that if I take the autocorrelation, I multiply by the um, coefficients within the filter, that should give me the um, autocorrelation of the uh, signal with the true data. So this is where I use, I say optimal, because this is trying to make it as close as possible to the true data. So I'm looking for this A that makes this close to the true data. And in this case, uh, once again, if I want to find the optimal co coefficients, optimal coefficients, I just have to do a pre-multiplication by the inverse 
of the autocorrelation function. And then I can find the optimal uh, signal. So this is um, assuming that I have all the statistics on the channel, how correlated they are with time, uh, that allows me to uh, calculate what the optimal coefficients are. This is known as the Wiener-Hoff equations. So it's a system of equations. If I think of this as a, uh, a vector, and then I have a 2n plus 1 individual equations that I can solve uh, in order to find uh, the optimal coefficients. And so this is a, s a system of equations which comes up often uh, in communications and in other applications.